All right, everybody, welcome. This is Stephanie, the creator of the C256 Phoenix uh, project. This is the uh, beginning of a long journey. Well, for you guys, because this is the beginning of a tutorial series about the system. And I guess you'll have to be uh, very patient, certainly at the beginning. Uh, because, you know, you remember when you were at school and starting to uh, always the first two or three weeks of school was always the, the, the worst because we have to review everything. Well, that's that's exactly going to be like that. It's going to be long and boring and you'll be like, oh, my God, will this thing will ever end? Well, I'll try to make it quick. I'll try to make it fun as possible as, 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 as much as I can. So this First module is about the system architecture, um, how it presents itself, and from the uh, image you can see what are the topics we'll be talking about. So, again, this is really the beginning. The idea is really about creating a bunch of videos talking about specifically the system itself, and we are going to talk about or start to talk about about the system architecture itself. So, bear with me. And let's begin. Okay, I'm still there. I was waiting for the video. All right, so this is the board from the top view, obviously. It's pretty clear, right? And uh, so you'll, you'll, you'll be seeing those little green thing popping up. And uh, I'll, talk, I'll start talking at that moment. Oh, there you go. You have one there. Okay, so ta-da-da, obviously the system starts with the CPU. This is a WDC 65C816 at specified or maximum tested speed, which is 14.813 whatever megahertz. Bot uh, the bottom or you know below, not the bottom, but below the CPU, you'll find the system flash, which where the kernel will reside and all the shenanigans you want. It's because it's going to be, since it's a flash, it's going to be reprogrammable. Or reprogrammable. You'll be able to put all the stuff you want. Um, and then next to it, there's actually another footprint for another flash, which is the user flash. You know, the f you guys. So anyway, let's move on. Uh, uh, next to the system flash, system RAM. Yay, there will be by default two, at least two megabytes of static RAM uh, and working at CPU speed, which is 14 megahertz. And there's a footprint next to it that you, well, not you, will have to decide um, globally if it makes sense to have two megs on the basic uh, platform or four. So to be discussed, uh, please post any comment about this, which one you'd like to have. Uh, each each RAM chip is about $10, so uh, tell me what you think. So this thing is going really fast, so I'll, I'll, I'll fasten the pace a little bit. So below the flash will have the real-time clock. I think it's pretty straight, uh, straight uh, self-explanatory, I should say. The expansion bus on the right side completely, where you can put anything you want. Then Gavin, which is the first uh, FPGA, which is a system manager, which connects to the system I.O. controller, which will be coming back later. All right. So let's not waste time. Vicky, yes, this is the big fat graphic chips, which has for herself four megs of static RAM, which is literally a ton of memory to store uh, sprites, um, you know, tiles information, bitmap information. This is really about data, okay? You don't put code in there, okay? It's really about, you actually, you put all your graphics there. That's the idea. Um, so during the blanking times, the CPU has have access. The rest of the time, Vicky takes care of displaying all your beautiful things you'll be creating on screen. Yes, 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 absolutely. You'll be delighted to see your stuff appears on screen at some point. Anyway, let's move on. As awesome the system is about graphic, it's equally awesome on the audio side. Can you imagine you have, well, you know what? Let's talk about the joystick first. <laughs> Just realized that this thing was, yeah, moving on. 
four joystick ports that you'll be able to use at your heart's desire or pleasure. What's the expression? Whatever. Um, and because Beatrix takes care of a few IOs, um, you know, and she takes care of the joystick ports um, and the dip switches for the system configuration. Some of the dip switches would be, uh, well, not R coded, but within the kernel, you'll be decided at boot if you want certain things or not. Pretty self explanatory. I mean, we've, we've been doing away from this for a long time, but it's coming back because it's so cool. And then there's the SD card controller, which is a controller in itself. And it's very contemporary. It's very, you know, used today with, you know, Arduino or I I can't believe that I'm going to say this word. Raspberry Yeah, yeah, okay. I should beep that part. Anyway, let's move on. Okay, audio section. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, there's two OPL2s. You know the chip that you used to be on the uh, Sound Blaster card? Yes, yes, yes it is. And then, you know what? This is double pleasure. But then on top of this, there's like a full, very recent actually, sorry about that, codec, 24-bit codec, uh, full DAC, full ADC, full capture. Um, probably have to lock it to a certain point because I don't think we'll be able to do 96 kilohertz on this thing. But still, a lot of potential there. And there's a, there's a DAC for the SID itself. Yes, the FPGA SID, the thing that everybody wants, but doesn't really want because it's not the real SID, you know? Anyway, so all these different audio devices should give you plenty of fun to create unbelievable thing, right? So because the codec actually has a mixer inside, so there's multiple inputs, there's even at the bottom, we'll talk about it later, um, you know, uh, audio output that you can mix in or you can sample, and obviously there's a DAC that you sample stuff. So it's like a big fancy Amiga, uh, way more powerful than Amiga. Can you imagine that? So in a nutshell, this is what the system is about. And if, um, yeah, well, let's move on because the slide decided to move on. Okay, so within the system, there's three subsystem. The system itself, which is the CPU, Gavin, which is a system manager, which basically has all these different blocks with the system RAM, the, the, the system flash, user flash, system RAM, either two meg or four meg to be decided, the expansion connector, and the uh, super IO. So this is one block, I would say. This is like pretty self-sustaining uh, within Gavin. There's um, an interrupt controller, there's a mat coprocessor block, there's three timers, uh, uh, a system DMA controller, and a background debug mode that I will talk eventually, uh, the flash, the boot flash manager, and it does take care of the um, bus demuxing from the uh, 65816. If anybody from WDC hears this printing or sees this presentation, please, you know, come up with a version where the box is already demuxed. That would simplify my, my life tremendously. Anyway, let's move on. I would need a bigger package, I know, but still. Um, yeah, uh, the Super IO uh, controls the floppy controller, comports LPT4. I mean, you can obviously read the slide. Uh, I will talk a little bit more. Uh, actually, the second modules that we'll talk about the memory map and you'll know where all these things have been um, located in the memory, which should help start, you know, have a good picture of what the system is about. Now, yay, Vicky, the Vicky block is like this awesome, well, no, it's, it's like this graphic awesomeness. That's what I'm trying to say. Listen, this thing rocks. The video system works at 200 megahertz, some parts at 200, some parts at 100. The video memory works at 100 megahertz, but there's 16 bit wide, so it's 200 megabyte per second transfer rate. We have a lot to do when you deal with 640 by 480 at 60 frames per second. We have bitmaps, we have tiles, four layers of tiles, we have 32 sprites, we have lookup tables. There will be a collision detection system, it's not there yet, but it's coming. A visual, a uh, visual, a Viki or video DMA controller to move stuff around. A lot of stuff. Okay, trust me. Listen, it's not a, it's not a Nvidia card, but for for supposedly the time it's supposed to come out, it's a full fledged system. Trust me, you'll have a lot of fun programming this this thing. 
you'll be like, oh my God, this is so awesome. This is like a, a super, 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 well, super Nintendo. It's, you know, you get the picture. You, you, you get to have, you get to choose like 24 bits values for your different colors. Uh, you have a DVI output and an analog output. But hey, you think I would stop there? <laughs> no way. No freaking way. No. I talked to you about Beatrix. She's awesome, you know? Well, I, I guess I'm going to repeat myself again, <laughs> I guess. So the audio subsystem, two OPL2s, one FPG said, the number of voices and how many there will be or how many channels there will be it still needs to be decided. I still need to, I'm still trying to get Gideon's stuff in there. It's, it's, it's a bit of a mess. Sorry, Gideon. But um, it's not as easy as the... Um, other ver other FPGA SID that are on the market right now. But anyway, I'm trying. I'm trying real hard. So there's a codec. The codec is like this brilliant ideas that just, you know, glued everything together because it mixes everything together. You'll be able to sample incoming video uh, audio stream, be, uh, be able to sample out, plus the OPL2s. So you'll really have like a 1980s, end of 1980s sound. It's super great although we'll have to lock the codec a little bit because it's way more powerful than it should be all right so the sd card controller this thing is on one end super awesome and on the other it's not that great because it, the commands are weird it's a chinese part it's the documentation suck ass you know let me tell you it's not great but it does the trick and um yeah and i'm sure you're gonna love me for that well, you'll probably love me for a lot of things, but among those things, probably for the SD card connector. So, all right, so those beautiful connectors you see in the front, you've been seeing for a while. Now, what are they? What are they doing, right? Yeah, that's what they're doing. I, I think it was pretty self-explanatory at this point, you know? Line in, headphone output. You know, do I really need to, 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 to tell you all these things? I mean, it was, you know, it's pretty obvious. And, you know... I've been talking for a while. Let's, let me shut up for five minutes. Well, not five minutes because the presentation will be over, but let's, let's wait for two seconds so you, get, let, you can have this information sink in, you know? So, uh, and if you do have questions while you're reading, uh, please post them in the comment, you know? Um, so the back side, this is the most, um, most f interesting part because that's probably the side you didn't see much so far. And as I reference, I put the system flash tag in the back so you, you could see or visualize how we, I actually turned board. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Okay, power switch, self-explanatory. Listen, it's all self-explanatory. It's not like I'm inventing anything right now, but it certainly gives you an idea of what's on the machine and uh, has been... Uh, fanned out, fanned out for you to be able to use. So this is going to be the full-fledged machine with everything on it. I don't know if anybody in the future will decide, oh, I want to get rid of the MIDI or use the, um, you know, open source design and say, hey, I want to get rid of this or I want to add this. But this is my vision. This is how I saw this machine. And you know what? It's freaking beautiful, you know? So let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. All right. So... You see, I turned the board 90 degrees. Are you kidding? Of course I turned the board. There was nothing else to do at that point. So, two very important things. The expansion connector, you have all the signals fanned out. So you, you want to put a, a Wi-Fi on it. You want to put an Ethernet controller because that's the first thing people say, oh, I'm going to put an Ethernet. Please don't put a Raspberry Pi on this. Please, I, I swear to you, if you, somebody comes up and say, I put a Raspberry Pi, I'm, I'm just going to fly somewhere and just... Uh, anyway... Next connector, the back door. I call it back door debug mode. It's really uh, an inter uh, a serial interface with commands to uh, Gavin that takes control of the bus and the system. So that will allow the developer to actually download, upload stuff, stop the processor. Ultimately, there will be a debugger so you can actually st stop this, uh, not the stop, but to breakpoint the CPU. And it's going to be awesome. And that's exactly the thing I'm procrastinating over right now, which is, I think, the thing we really need or I need to let go of the system. 
So you see, there's this thing in me that just want to wait more. And I really, I have to work really hard to pass this procrastination point where I can actually release the board. Anyway, I'll talk more about this later. Okay, so finally, final specification. Yay! So this is in a nutshell, if I would make a, a spec and I was going to, to make an advertisement for the system, that's basically what I would put on that ad. The system flash, the user flash, uh, how much memory, uh, Okay, I'm talking about that in module two, but if you feel that we the base system would be better served or the community would be better served with four meg instead of two, uh, yeah, four meg instead of two, and you're willing to pay $10 more to get that to, the, to, to two extra megabyte, please post it. Let me know, what do you think? Do you think two megs is enough? Is it too much? Uh, it is really important because I'm kind of, you know, if you're paying like, I don't know, $300 for a system like that, I don't know exactly the price will be, but would it be a big deal to pay 310 to get four meg and be done with it and know that we'll never run out of it and we'll, nobody will spend time trying to create an expansion to full to, to, to you know to fill the whole memory space with RAM, you know because some people came oh let's put 16 meg and then of course you can put 16 meg but what's the point right? Are you going to create a game? which you will need like, you know, 16 megs of code. I mean, people made miracle with 64K. What would you need four meg for? So that's the point. So come back to me. And um, well, thank you. We're, we're, we're done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you believe that? We're done. Well, 16 minutes in, almost 17. All right, guys. Thank you. Uh, I posted a second uh, tutorial module. The second one will be uh, more boring because I actually started doing my funny stuff uh, on this one, and I actually created the sec the first one after the first. The sec well, you'll, you'll understand. Anyway, please subscribe. I need more subscriber, please. So more subscriber, more interested people. If you're interested to develop games, application on the early adopters, please let me know. I need to know. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.